Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. Beyonce just released a cover of her upcoming album, Cowboy Carter. And this is supposed to be a country inspired album and Beyonce revealed that she made this album because of the backlash she received at the Country Music Awards back in 2016. And I'm actually gonna get into that because I do feel like Beyonce is getting revenge on the country music industry. But before I do, I wanna talk about the covers. Now she does have this one cover where she's riding on a white horse in this patriotic fit. And this is her way of giving a nod to cowboy culture. And I really like this picture, actually. I think this cover is pretty hard. She also did another cover where she was stripped down. She was wearing a pageant sash and she had a braided beaded hair look. And Erica Badu had something to say about it. Apparently she feels like Beyonce is copying her look because lately Erica has been wearing her hair this way. Now she posted this on her IG story in response to this cover saying, hmm, this is not the first time Erica called Beyonce out. I do remember last year, she kind of felt like Beyonce was copying her style by wearing these big wide brim hats. And there was a metallic tin hat that Beyonce wore in particular that Erica felt was similar to her look. So Erica called Beyonce out on it and now she's calling Beyonce out again because she feels like Beyonce is following her mood board and taking her hairstyle. Now, here's the thing. This whole beaded hairstyle did not originate from Erica Badu. Okay, this is an African hairstyle <laughs> that originated centuries ago by different African tribes in Egypt and even the South African tribe, like the Zulu tribe. Also, artists in the 70s and 80s like Rick James, Patrice Russian, Peaches and Herb, they popularized this look in the Western culture. And this look has carried on for decades and decades, we've seen Serena and Venus wear this beaded hair look. We've seen SZA wear it. We've seen Beyonce and Lupita and Solange wear it. This look is not new. So I'm not exactly sure why Erica feels like Beyonce is copying her, but she feels like Beyonce is watching her moves. And the Beehive wasn't here for it. They dragged her. And after she received all that backlash, she called out Jay-Z and said to Jay, say something, Jay, you gonna let this woman and her bees do this to me? <laughs> and she put this video under her caption. I, and I might hate you for the rest of my life, for real, because you knew, <laughs> you knew. <laughs> now, I think Erica is just trolling at this point. She really is trolling. And it's clear that she does feel a way about Beyonce. We don't know if this feud is one-sided. We don't know if maybe she has a legitimate reason to feel how she feels. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but I do think Erica was reaching with this whole comparison thing. Beyonce was not copying her, at least not with this hairstyle. And Beyonce's team, her publicist Yvette, clapped back at Erica and she showed a reel of Beyonce wearing braids. So basically this was her way of saying, girl, you didn't start nothing. Nobody's copying you. Beyonce been doing this, mind your business. Stop coming for the queen. <laughs> now I wanna redirect the conversation back to why Beyonce is making this country inspired album. Like I said, she's getting her revenge on the country music industry ever since she got backlash for performing at the CMAs. Now, back in 2016, Beyonce performed her country song, Daddy's Lessons, which was on her album, Lemonade, and she performed with the Dixie Chicks. And at this point, the Dixie Chicks were canceled by their own audience because they criticized the Bush administration for invading Iraq. And this was a huge no-no. The country music audience is very conservative. Most of them are Republicans. So when the Dixie Chicks criticized George Bush, they got canceled and they were kind of blackballed for years. But Beyonce didn't care about that. She brought the Dixie Chicks up on stage with her at the Country Music Awards and she delivered probably the best performance at the CMAs ever. But she got a lot of racial backlash. A lot of people weren't here for it. In fact, there was a person who was there that night who witnessed the backlash. His name is Tanner D. He said, I was at the CMAs the night this happened. I'll never forget when a woman in front of me yelled, get that black bee off the stage. These experiences have happened countless of times to numerous black folks in country music spaces. We're trying to change that at Black Opry. So this negative experience actually prompted Beyonce 
to create a country album and she is going to break down doors in this country music industry for black artists this is what she said in her caption thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of the supporters of texas hold'em and 16 carriages i feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on the hot country songs chart that would not have happened without the outpouring of support from each and every one of you. My hope is that years from now, the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant. This album has been over five years in the making. It was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcome and it was very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive in the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. It feels good to see how music can unite so many people around the world while also amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history. The criticism I faced when I first entered this genre forced me to propel past the limitations that were put on me. Act two is a result of challenging myself and taking my time to bend and blend genres together to create this body of work. I have few surprises on the album and have collaborated with some brilliant artists who I deeply respect. I hope that you can hear my heart and soul and all the love and passion that I poured into every detail and every sound. I focus on this album as a continuation of Renaissance. I hope this music is an experience creating another journey where you can close your eyes, start from the beginning and never stop. This ain't a country album. This is a Beyonce album. This is act two, Cowboy Carter. And I'm proud to share it with y'all. Yeehaw! So if you read between the lines, Beyonce is basically taking revenge on the country music industry for the hateful backlash she received years ago. She's coming back with a vengeance and she's gonna take the whole genre by storm. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it because it's not only gonna give her the satisfaction of getting her respect, but it's also gonna break down a lot of barriers for a lot of other black country music artists who have been around. And I'm really happy to see this happening. And it's so interesting because years ago, <laughs> I actually did a whole video about black people in country music. I talked about the controversy that Beyonce and Lil Nas X received when they were entering the country genre. And I also broke down the history of black people in country music. And really country music is a black art. It has black roots, which is why it's very interesting that black people don't really have a big presence in country music like that. And it's been a struggle for the existing black country music artists out today as well, because they've been trying to break through and make a name for themselves. However, it's not as easy for them to flourish because of the politics that are involved, the channels they gotta go through, the gatekeepers they have to appease. And not only that, they have to appeal to middle America. And middle America doesn't really gravitate to people who don't look like them. And unfortunately, they don't even have the support from other black people because black people, for the most part, don't really listen to country music. So it's really hard for black country music artists to thrive. You have a few that have made a name for themselves like the legend Charlie Pride. You have Kane Brown, Jimmy Allen, Darius Rucker, who's also a legend in the game, but you can only really name a few. There's only a handful that have seen some type of mainstream success, but it's really a struggle for most black artists out there. It's really an uphill battle and the race factor plays a huge part in this. T-Pain talked about working with big country artists and ghost writing a lot of songs, but he doesn't get acknowledged for his work because of his race. Music. Country music is where I get all my harmonies. Country and gospel music, that's where, that's where all my har harmonies come from. I wrote a lot of country songs. Stop taking credit for it because as, as cool it is to see your name and those credits and shit like that, the racism that comes after it is just like, I'll just take the check. <laughs> Don't put me on that. I'll just take the check, bro. Never mind, dude. You know what I mean? He writes a lot of country. I write a lot of country music. I write for, a lot of for country For country artists. For huge country artists that, that would rather not uh, have it known that I, that I did it. <laughs> 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 Other artists have talked about the lack of representation and how difficult it is to get acknowledgement, but they are determined to break down those barriers. There is a lot of work to be done 
um, in terms of just how many women get played on the radio, you know, how many people of color get played on country radio. I didn't know any black country artists. I was just like, I'm going to go to Nashville and I will make history myself. I will make sure that there's representation. What country means to me is it's my roots. We helped found, find country music. We helped build that genre and to have it be reflected today that we don't belong or, you know, country music is for white people. That is far from the truth. Even though black country artists are still trying to overcome certain barriers in the genre, they're still pursuing the music because they genuinely love it. There are so many black country artists out there who have been making a lot of waves like Rashad and Shabuzi. They do contemporary country, but they also mix country with hip hop. You have Blanco Brown who had a huge hit called The Get Up. You have artists like Breland and Mickey Guyton. Breland, I really like his sound. I love his voice. I love Mickey Guyton's voice. Also, you have crooners like Tony Evans Jr., who's so talented. You have artists like Tanner Adele and Raina Roberts who infuse pop and hip hop in their country music. And their country music is fun. I love Tanner's Buckle Bunny. That song slaps. Also, you have this couple named The War and Treaty who sing bluesy country. You have groups like The Bros Fresh who has this song called Your Energy, which is infused with pop and soul and dance and funk. And then groups like Chapel Heart who make traditional but fun country music. And there's a mother and daughter band called One The Duo who has country music infused with soul, hip hop, rock and roll. And there are so many artists who are just doing their thing like Britney Spencer, Julie Williams, Reese Palmer. There's like a whole list of them and I'm gonna put them in my description box down below. A lot of them do traditional country music, contemporary country, bluegrass, folk, but also they are doing a lot of experimental things with country music and they are blending so many different genres and really bringing a unique sound to country music. And I do have a feeling that Beyonce is gonna follow suit and blend different genres the way that these artists already have. I definitely think she's gonna take inspiration and definitely follow their footsteps for sure. Also, I can't forget about K. Michelle. K. Michelle was one of the first R&B artists I've heard speak about her passion for country music. And for years, she's been trying to transition to country music. And she's done country songs like Tennessee, Just Like Jay, and If It Ain't Love. And she talked about the country music industry and the inner workings of it. She kind of put people up on game on how to really navigate through that industry and how important it is to understand the culture because it is going to affect how the artist is received. Once I moved to Nashville and got to see how they move, it ain't going past seven o'clock on the Nashville schedule. Yeah. They going home with their family. They going to be there at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Ain't no egos. Like the day Ernest came to my house and worked in my studio, mm -hmm. he had the number one song. They had sold 150, him and Morgan, like in country. He come down there in his robe talking to my mom on the phone. We weren't even doing that. Them like my brothers. Wow. Yeah. We be over here playing with like like black music and culture. We just let anybody do anything from a TikTok or from a something. And we let anybody go play around in our music. I'm sorry. Yes, there is racism in Nashville. But most importantly, you're not going to go fuck around with their music. Hmm. You're not going to be over there unless you can really play that piano. You're not going to be around there unless you can really write. Unless you can really sing. They're not playing with you. Hmm. And to be in that type of loving environment, to go into a city that is based around the songwriters and the song being bigger than the artist. You know, it's about the song in the song, Asheville. It's about, the song. it's about the song. I had never experienced that. So I'm thinking they finna stay up with me all night. They are going to their families and they on time too. They on time to these sessions. Yeah. I never have recorded like a Nashville. Mm. Yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. That's oh, why I asked. I'm not going to play with them over there. Y'all not going to go over there and just hop in no shit over here. Yeah. Right. No. Y'all going to do some music. You going you gonna right. to pay You gonna pay your dudes like Bluebird Cafe. You ain't going to sing country unless you do the Bluebird Cafe. I had just did the Bluebird Cafe. They said they had never seen such an African-American turnout. They didn't know what was going on. And it, <laughs> it, it's like this room. It's my biggest this room. But every week. 
the biggest of artists, they're going to go play the Bluebird Cafe. They down here at Winners and Losers playing their music for fun. They ain't getting paid for that. They ain't doing that. They just out there with their people out there singing. I ain't know what. Wow. For the love. For, for the, the love. love. For the yeah. love. I ain't never seen nothing like that. For ain't nobody love. in their ego. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's racism. Yes, we need to. We got to fight. We got to fight blacks. We got to fight for everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they are still trying to uphold. Yeah, the traditions. The of, traditions. Of, of that music. Of the genre. Yeah. I ain't used to that. So when I heard K. Michelle break down the inner workings of how things operate in the country music industry, it was pretty enlightening to me. And K. Michelle is going through the traditional route. She's not just using her celebrity to gain attention for her music. She is collaborating and networking with different artists and going through the proper channels to gain acknowledgement and support. And it's hard, but she's doing it and it's working for her. And I do hope her country music album is successful. And in the wake of Beyonce announcing her album, I hope that people don't forget about K. Michelle because I think K. Michelle is really one of the first ones to start this trend of transitioning from R&B to country. I think she's one of the first big artists that I've seen do this. And now Beyonce is doing it. And I think Beyonce doing it is great. She's getting a ton of support from several black country music artists. I've seen a lot of them come out and repost her on their story and talk about how excited they are that she's releasing a country album. So she's getting a lot of support. And also there are some country artists who do want to highlight that people should also support other black artists in the genre. But I just wanted to comment on all of this Beyonce excitement around country music um, and just say how excited I am for her to be choosing stylistically the country genre. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name's Tanner Adele. I'm a country artist. I'm so excited for Beyonce to come in here and make a splash in this genre. And I just want to emphasize that there are girls in this genre who don't look like the other girls that are traditionally in this genre and they've been here and they've been working hard to go support them. I think what I'm most excited about for this new Beyonce era, other than the songs, the fits and all of that, uh, is that hopefully more recognition and attention will be given to black country artists, mixed country artists that are already out here in the space. My name is Julie, I'm a mixed country artist in Nashville. Uh, we've been out here making music, trying to be seen, sharing our stories, and uh, the country music world isn't really listening. So as you're adding Beyonce, make sure to add some other black country artists. Here's some amazing ones that I love. Uh, and if I'm missing any, please tag them in the comments. Uh, follow, stream. Beyonce just dropped the name of her new country album, Cowboy Carter. And like this creator said, it's not only play on the Carter name, but it also has deep historic meaning. I encourage you to watch the whole video, but basically the summary is there is this family that is known as the first family of country music called the Carter family. And their most famous member, Mabel Carter, was credited for inventing this style of playing uh, called the Carter Scratch that basically she learned from a black artist. And this is why Beyonce's country era is so important because she's not only bringing us new music, but she's also teaching us our history. She started this with Texas Hold'em and Rhiannon Giddens playing the banjo, which was an instrument created by slaves. And now with the name Cowboy Carter, I think she's showing us what this album is really going to be about. So while this album is gonna take a look back at her history, it's also important to know what's going on right now in black country space. So make sure to check out the Black Opry, Color Me Country, and all these amazing artists who are out here doing the work in country. My name is Julie Williams. I'm a mixed country artist in Nashville, and these are two organizations that you need to know. The Black Opry Review is a collective of black artists in country, Americana, folk, roots, blues, you name it. There's over 200 of us in the collective. So you can't be out here saying, I don't know where to find black country artists. You find them in the Black Opry. We tour around the country as part of the Black Opry Review. So go ahead, look us up, find a show in your, in your city, and come out and support. The second is Color Me Country on Apple Radio. Color Me Country was started by Reese Palmer, who is an icon in the black country music space and the reason that we are all here. So if you get a chance, please support all the country music artists of color. They're out there, they're doing their thing. Anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.